It's amazing what you end up having to drink out of when you haven't done the washing up recently. Um, anyway, hey everybody, Andrew here. It is the 12th of February and um, a little while back ago I got a spheroid, uh, a GP spheroid and I'd been looking to get one for a while but then I really started looking earnestly to get one because I had got a NEMI. So that's the little um, 17 millimeter mod from Atma Makani or Atma Mahani. And also I have a micro stick on the way, which is uh, also something which will uh, take a, I think it will take up to a 16 and a half millimeter atomizer in it. So anyway, spheroid being a 16 mil, absolutely perfect. That's what I wanted to get. And of course I'd heard so much about it as well. So I managed to get hold of a second hand one. Um, on a forum here in Ireland. Now when it arrived unfortunately at the bottom of it there's a little insulator um, which goes around the central post in the 510 connector at the bottom and that was missing uh, so I wasn't able to use it for the first while. But the chap who I bought it from uh, and thanks very much to him he ended up getting me a whole replacement kit not only just the bit for the bottom so it just goes to show how good vapors are out there you know um, really really nice he went way beyond what he needed to do to sort out uh, my issue with with uh, the thing that I bought from with the spheroid that I bought from anyhow enough of all of that when I got the spheroid I was, I'd seen how to wick it before and make coils for it and that and so I went into it and I started doing it and uh, and frankly I was I was pretty un underwhelmed. It really didn't deliver properly for me. And so I probably tried about four or five different bills and eventually I just started to experiment a little bit to come up with something which was, you know, I felt was going to work. So I came up with a new coil and it's a sort of... A well, it's the coil isn't new, it's the wick that's in it. And it's a sort of cotton-silica hybrid. Now, I'll show that to you later. Um, but first of all, I just want to show you um, the spheroid itself. So there it is. Obviously, that's the top part. And it is sitting on a NEMI at the moment. My NEMI. And it looks absolutely fantastic. You know, really, really nice. That's in 14500 mode. Um, obviously, with the NEMI, you can get it to 14650 as well. But it uh, looks really good. And... It vapes beautifully now really 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 thrilled with this and of course one of the great things about the spheroid is the fact that um, it just doesn't leak you know once you've got it set up properly you can do anything to it I mean they claim on their website that you can even use it on on planes or rather take it on planes um, now I have had um, various different things in planes when I've been tootling around the place and uh, inevitably they end up dumping in your pocket or your bag or whatever. But I can imagine with this that um, it probably everything does stay inside just because of the nature of the beast. So look, what we'll do is we'll go down close on it. Um, many of you would have seen the spheroid uh, before but I'll go through that quickly. I'll just take it, take it to bits and sort of put it back together again. But then most importantly I'll put the coil um, and the wick in to show you how I do it. Now the way I'm doing it is almost identical to the way that they suggest that you do it on the website. So in other words, you're using a loop which goes up into the center. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of something to it. And for me, that little bit of something is making a huge difference to it. So enough of that. Let's go down close and see what it's like. So I think we'll do a grim green type of transition from this into the close up. Right, let's go through the bits that make up the spheroid. We have uh, the base. Now I've taken the base apart here. Um, if we look at, we'll look at this, the deck first of all. So if you look at that, you can see it's got, uh, there's a positive post and a negative. Uh, so one's got an insulator there. Um, these are twisty nuts, which are a pain. 
Um, I mean, you can use them fine, but it's I'm just so much more used to using screws. But you can actually upgrade those now, so that if you get one that's like this, you can actually get, I think it's a V3 kit, or upgrade kit or whatever, and essentially what it does is it actually changes those so that you, that you have screws, slightly different terminals. Uh, they're easily changed because if you actually look at the bottom there, you can see that they are just screwed in like that. So I assume what you do is you just take those out and put the new ones in and you're left with a deck that has now got screws on the post as opposed to nuts as it is there. You can see there's a little air hole in the middle there that's obviously um, going to draw the air in and other than that we've got threading at the side for the top to go onto and then we've got an O-ring. We have got a serial number there and the GP uh, logo on that side. So into that, into this here, goes this here, which is the base, empty at the moment, but that base then gets filled with this little piece here. So what I'll do is I'll put this base together and show you how it works. So essentially what we're doing, you see there's an insulator in here as well, that basically just goes in there like that. Now all we do is we put this on here and rather than screwing it um, in the normal way it's actually reverse threaded this so you need to actually put it on turn it the opposite way to what feels natural. Now as you'll see here we've got two little holes you can get a little tool with this which is like a wire tool where you've got two prongs that go in there to actually turn it uh, or you can use a, a needle nose, which is what I'm doing here. So all you do is you basically put them into the holes like that and then just twist it until it is nice and tight. I'm going to probably give it one more little twist there. And that'll do us fine. So that's the base on now. Now the bit that I mentioned earlier on when I got this at the beginning and it was missing an insulator, um, this is the insulator that it was missing, this tiny little piece here. So that actually fits in at the bottom, in fact I think I've over tightened this because it's, uh, so what I need to do is turn that the opposite way. Now this is this little head in here is actually moving as you can see. So once I've got that there like that, I can just plunk this on on top of it and then screw this back in again. And there we go. Everything is tickety boo and that's the bottom. Now, one thing I find which is a bit of a pain is the fact that this little insulator here can very easily drop out. Um, you know, I mean, if you drop it, if you drop this thing on the floor, that's going to fly out of it. I think that's just a bit of a pain, but uh, anyway, it's, it's not a deal breaker in any shape or form. So that's the bottom there, or the base. Then what we have is our center post if you like where the air is actually going to or the vapor is going to travel up and this is the top of the unit which takes any 510 uh, connect uh, 510 drip tip and then you'll see inside there there's a, a, a slot for an allen key to actually close it up so essentially what happens is this goes on to this and then that goes on to that and that gives you your spheroid but obviously that's not going to work just as is. What we need to do is put the filler around this and to put a coil on this here. So that's what I'll show you how to do now. Now you hear people talking about uh, Sera wool and um, different names like that. This is what I'm using here. And what we're going to do with this is this is actually going to wrap around this, to, which will then go into the uh, center tube here like that. Now. You can buy this stuff for next to nothing. Basically what it is, it's filter wool for, um, it's sterile filter wool that's used in fish tanks and filters for fish tanks. And that's the, uh, hang on, bring it back a bit. That's the one that I'm using. 
but uh, and you can buy it online anywhere and this one's just handy because it's in thin sheets some of the stuff it gets really thick so this just is very very handy so let's get back into this and I'll show you how we put the wool in so simply what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this this by the way is about two centimeters by four centimeters approximately uh, you don't have to really be bang on. Uh, you need enough of it in here but you don't want too much because otherwise it's it's going to uh, not absorb as much uh, liquid as you like because it will be too closely packed. So essentially what you do is you wrap it around it like that. Okay. And when you've got it wrapped around like that pop it into the tube here shove it in, try not and get loads of hairy bits coming out at the, the top and once you've got that there like that then it's a case of just screwing it up like that. Now I don't, I never screw it up that tight, I just use one of these little allen key drip, drip bits or dri drill bits. Um, so there we go now you'll see that the center part here is still covered over by that uh, material so what I would tend to do is just get a screwdriver and then just poke down around the edges I don't know whether you can see what's going on here just poke it down not too tight just so that you're clearing a ring in the center and then as you find stuff hanging into the center just bring it out to the side and push it down you can see we can see the center now. Right now to make uh, the coil for this thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, an M M3 coil uh, using this here. I just find them so much easier than, than doing uh, the, any of the other kind of coils. Uh, so it's an M3 micro coil uh, and that's also going to allow us to uh, keep the coil in place after the silica um, has been used up. Oh by the way I forgot to mention this is going to be going in here so let's put a little bit of this in there as well because we're going to be using that also. Right so let's move the bits out of the way and we'll start the process. Right so I have an M M3 screw here, god the light is awful in here, I'm sorry about that. Um, let's pull it back a little bit see if it helps in any way, not really. Um, so I'm using an M3 screw here and basically what I want to do is I want to get five wraps off uh, on the M3 screw. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then I can release the first one a little bit. So that gives me my little coil there. That's a little bit scruffy at the back, so let's just pull that one in. And that should be okay there. So there we go. So the next thing we need to do is basically put this on the deck. So I put um, the deck here on this uh, little handy little stand and basically just undo the thumb screws there so that it's able to take uh, the wires. So then what we're going to do is just basically Let's get it in there so you can see what's going on. What we're going to do is basically pop the coil in there right into the middle and then just twist the wires around to basically hold them in place. Now I you can you know you can you can use your thumbs to actually uh, screw these things up but um, for me it never seems to do it tight enough so what I would do is just basically tighten them up enough so that they're being held and then use gently a little needle nose like this just to tighten them up that little bit more and then do the same thing to the other side here they are so fiddly these things I'm going to just turn it around this way here. The 
we're all tightened up there and uh, I'm going to take these uh, leads off at this stage because I think we're, we're all nice and tight so let's just uh, get these off here again as ever you want to get in as close as you can to the screws take one off take the other one off now so let's uh, take this out that looks pretty neat in there but we're going to need to compress that so to do that we need to get it onto a mod I've just screwed this onto a Nemesis here onto a full size mod so you can actually see the difference in diameter at the top uh, it's a big difference. This is um, 16 and this is 22 mil there, so uh, gives you an indication of the size. But it's just handy because we're going to have to compress this little coil here, so it gives it a more uh, steady base for us to do it on. So, first thing we need to do is just heat it up. Once you've got it nice and hot like that, then off the power and then just use a tweezers or a little pliers just to basically hold the coil. And as you'll see what that's actually done now is that's pulled it very very tight together like that. So that is looking pretty good to me. I don't think I need to do much more than that. Um, what you can do there is you can actually increase the height of it, bring it up higher uh, higher or lower uh, basically sort of has an impact on the throat hit that you get. Um, what I might actually do is I might go just slightly higher on this here. So again to do that what I can do is just basically put my screw back in here. And then just lift it up a bit to about there. As you can see that is now higher than it was. So again we just need to compress it again, get them stuck together. That's all good. And then just a gentle squeeze till it cools down. And there we go from the inside out looking quite nice now this should be relatively low on the ohm front so let's just actually have a look now before I go any further and um, we'll stick it on a, on something that'll tell us what the ohms are now we'll just have a quick look and see what this has come out at and it is 1.3 1.4 so that's fine because this is remember this is actually going to be running on a uh, on an emmy which is a mechanical mod anyway now to the bit that i was having issues with at the beginning um essentially as i showed you before what we have is this top part it's kind of like a big carto really and it's got this filler material in it which basically absorbs lots of liquid this then sits on top of this and the wicks that are coming up out of this touch onto that and so basically it then the capillary action brings it down from above into the coil here. Now I've seen it done lots of different ways. One of them is that you basically have you know two coming up one side, two bits coming up the other side of wick and then it just sort of feeds into it that way. The way that they suggest uh, on the site where they sell this is that essentially you have a loop so you have two pieces together a loop comes out and then the loop actually goes in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that loop way but I'm just going to put some cotton into it as well because as I said I feel it makes quite a difference to it now often the big question is how much do you actually use uh, in terms of wick if you're doing the loop one what you do is you wrap your wick around so that it's basically the diameter of the thing and that's how much you need there. So we'll just cut that off at that point there. 
So as you see, it's quite a small bit of work. So our next thing to do is to actually get that into this little coil here. The way to thread through something like this is to, you know, it's like the old uh, um, thread and sewing needle. Essentially what you do is get a bit of the wire that you cut off earlier on, your excess wire, fold it in half and then loop it like that. As you can see. Then all we need to do is feed these two through the coil and then gently pull the two through like that. Okay, But we don't want to go too far with that and I'll show you why now. We then want to basically turn it over so that it's laying flat like that and then in comes the cotton. Thin bit of cotton now, essentially what I'm going to do is just push it between those two bits of silica there like that and then just gently work it through. Now you may need to keep your nail on the actual coil just to make sure that it doesn't tear the coil apart. And what you're going to get, end up with is something like that. So as you can see, we've got cotton going through and we've also got the silica as well. Now that we've got uh, all of that sorted out, what we need to do is basically clean this up a little bit. Um, we just take our extra bit of cotton off at the end there. And then this is our loop which is going to get fed up into the spheroid, into the main body. And what's going to happen is then it is going to be bringing liquid down to the coil down here which has now got cotton mixed in with the actual silica. Next thing to do is to get uh, this all filled up with liquid. So. I find the best way to do it is, you know, to use a needle nose bottle or a syringe or something that can basically go down the sides like this. As I said, it'll take about sort of two and a half, three mils of juice. So what you want to do is just fill it up until it gets to the point where the top is sort of uh, glistening, so to speak. Now we're all filled up there, so all good to go. Now on this base part here what we need to do is remember we have cotton on this now so you can't, can't go and just burn it uh, because the thing will probably go on fire. So what we need to do is just screw this off, put it onto what it is that I'm going to use which is going to be the little Nemi. Like that and then just get some liquid on this. Just make sure that everything is doing what it's meant to do. And it certainly is. Right, so now we're ready to put it in. Again, this is something that I had a few issues with at the beginning. Um, when you do the loop, I was sort of putting the loop in the wrong way and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to show you this because it's kind of awkward but essentially what you want to do is when you put the loop in uh, how am I going to do this when you put the loop in you want the loop to go around the outside so Let's see, if I put that in there like that, and then I put that in there like that, are you able to see it, I wonder? Okay, so there's the inside. I'm putting the loop in, so the loop is down at the bottom. I'm putting the loop in around the edges, and then I'm pushing the center part in over the top. Now, I really don't know whether you were able to see that or not, but um, hopefully you could. So then we just screw the top on. 
and that should be that. So there you have it. It's very straightforward. As I'd said at the beginning, it is um, all I'm doing is using the sort of the, the standard method, if you like. Um, but for me, adding that bit of cotton in there, it just seems to make all the difference. Uh, it does taste, there's always a slightly different taste between silica and cotton. And to be honest, this is kind of somewhere in between. Well, I suppose it would be because it's a mixture of the two. But just for such a small bit of cotton at the bottom, uh, you know, what it's doing is it means that it's retaining more liquid underneath the coil. And by doing that, it just means that if you give it a really good caning, um, it's just not going to dry out. It's going to always have enough there to actually, um, you know, to, to work very well. So, and it does. And the flavour of it is absolutely gorgeous. So, anyhow, um, that's it. Uh, I've also, by the way, in combining, in a similar sort of a method, combining cotton and um, silica, I've also done uh, done my K-Funds and that seems to work very, very well. Traditionally, I just use cotton in it. In fact, in one of them, it is still just cotton. But in the other one, I've done one of these sort of hybrid um, cotton silica coils and um, it works. It works an absolute treat as well. So that's it. Um, the GP Spheroid, really terrific device. After my sort of slightly false start with it, I must say I love the thing. I really, really do. And you know, it doesn't hold a massive amount of liquid, but it's certainly enough to go out for a night with. It's a, I think it holds two and a bit mils or whatever. Um, but it's just, I think it's bulletproof once you get it set up. So that's it. Hope to see you again. Thanks very much for watching as ever. Cheers.